Hello, my name is Mark O'Keefe. I'm the editorial page of the Herald Standard. I want to welcome you to this editorial board meeting with candidates for 52nd District of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, which includes parts of Fayette and Westmoreland counties. Candidates are Democrat A.J. Boney and Republican Ron Warner, running for the seat previously held by Deb Kohler, who's running for the state senate in the 32nd District. We want to thank the candidates very much for coming in and agreeing to share their views with uh, Herald Standard uh, readers and uh, website viewers. Members of the Herald Standard editorial board present today include myself, Paul Pernarski, publisher, Mike Palm, executive editor, Patty Dogger, county government reporter, and Bill Long, Jim Hersick, and John Rapano, community board members. The candidates will have three minutes to give opening and closing uh, statements and three minutes to answer questions. Members of the board may ask follow-up questions and candidates We'll have three minutes to answer those questions as well. Candidates should not interrupt when questions are being answered. Candidates should use their own time if they want to rebut any comments. So we'll start out with the uh, opening uh, uh, statements and uh, we'll go in alphabetical order. So I think that means you're going first, AJ. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. And I want to thank the editorial board for this opportunity to this afternoon to be here, and I also want to thank the voters of the 52nd District for giving me the honor to get to this position in this campaign. Um, as you know, I am A.J. Bonney. I am running for the House of Representatives of the 52nd District. I've been a lifelong resident of Perry Township and a lifelong resident of the 52nd District. For the past 14 years, I've been a township supervisor in Perry Township. been very fortunate and blessed to be you know, given the opportunity through the people in that community to represent each and every one of them every day. I've been a volunteer fireman for 30 years at the Perry Township Volunteer Fire Department, and I've also been a member of the Pennsylvania State Executive Board for PSATs for the past six years, which represents over 1,400 townships throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Um, I take this opportunity very heartfelt and very thankful to be able to bring what I've done in Perry Township to take it to the House. There's a lot of issues going on in the House right now. You see a lot of things going on. As we all know, as of today, there's only five days left for um, seating in the House and th voting actions to be going on. So that will be coming to an end rel relatively quickly. The 52nd District is very complex and very dear to my heart. There's a lot of very important things to the County of Fayette in the 52nd District. We're fortunate to have numerous school, the three school districts that we represent there, um, the, the hospital over there, and as everyone knows, to, also to me is the autism school in Connellsville. They were very fortunate and blessed to have that in Fayette County. But again, by being the township supervisor for 14 years, we've balanced budgets, we haven't raised taxes, we've done what we're committed to do to our residents, and that's to be productive every day, live within our means, not raise taxes. And by doing that, I'm hoping to be able to take that knowledge and techniques to Harrisburg. We have to, you know, pay our bills. We can't continue to keep borrowing on our future. There's bills out there that have to be paid. We need to pay them before we create new bills. So, you know, again, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity today, and thank you again. Um, I'm very thankful to have the opportunity uh, to be your next state representative, uh, and I'd also like to thank the Herald Standard Editorial Board for having me here today. Um, my background, uh, my story, it's like many of yours. Um, I grew up here in Fayette County. Uh, I've lived here my entire life. I went to high school here. I went to college here. Um, and now I'm raising two beautiful children here. Um, I come from a working class family. Um, before starting the logging business, my father was a union steel worker um, and my mother has worked at the same bank her whole life and is now a manager at a uh, branch in West Newton. As for me, I spent a lot of my life uh, working at my dad's sawmill. Uh, I attended college for two years at Penn State Fayette before I graduated from the main campus. And uh, after college, I was uh, fortunate enough to get a career at uh, Siemens Industry as a project controller. Um, in this position, I was in charge of managing, uh, managing budgets for projects, and I had to account for every dollar that was spent on each project that I controlled. Uh, when projects went over budget, I had to find out why, and I had to find solutions to get us back on budget. 
Uh, nearly five years with the company, I had managed over $100 million in project costs. Uh, but unfortunately, one day, uh, after making it through two different layoffs with the company, uh, I lost my job because of the economy and downsizing. Uh, it's because of this experience and the future for my children that uh, I'm here today. Um, I want to provide the next generation uh, an opportunity to stay here and have an opportunity to find, a, to find a quality job. In the past 10 years, we've lost 10% of our population. Uh, we continually rank last or next to last in every economic measurement in the state. However, many counties around us continue to experience growth in economic opportunities. This is why it's vital that we bring new leadership into our district. This is why we need someone who will fight for good paying jobs, someone who will represent our, and, our, and understands our concerns and shares our values. Folks, we don't need another politician, we need somebody that's one of us. If I'm elected, I will fight for working families. I will lead by example by refusing a taxpayer paid pension, per diems, and other perks. I'll stand up to politicians, Republican or Democrat, to put our priorities first. I'll fight for local job creation and effective job retraining programs for our workers, and I'll fight to cut wasteful spending and oppose tax increases. Uh, folks, I'm, I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm, I'm just a guy here that wants to work hard and get our community back on track, and I hope that I'm given that opportunity to be your next representative. Uh, thank you again for this opportunity. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. Okay, I'll take the uh, first question. Uh, legislation is uh, been proposed that would require lawmakers to turn in receipts to collect reimbursements for work-related expenses instead of just claiming unvoucher per diem payments up to $159 a day. Do you favor such legislation, and will you take the per diems? Let's start with Mr. Um, yeah, as I just mentioned, I, I am in favor of turning in actual expenses rather than per diems, and uh, I will make a pledge right now that I will not take per diems if elected into this office. Uh, I think this is just another perk that a lot of our politicians in Harrisburg are getting away with, and uh, I will absolutely refuse it. Um, Mark, I, I, there's no way, we've done it for 14 years in Perry Township. If you don't have a receipt, you can't be reimbursed. I mean, that law definitely needs to be passed. It's passed, that it should have been done a long time ago. I mean, there's no reason for a per diem to be there with a, you know, a, without a receipt. I mean, if you're spending the money, then you're being reimbursed for it, that's fine, and that law definitely needs to be enacted. So yes, I am for that legislation. Then you wouldn't take the per diem? No, I would take it on, on, on a, re, re, if I have the receipt, my reimbursement. Okay, Bill, do you want to take the second question? Yes, thank you. Tom Worth, a Democratic candidate for governor, has harshly accused incumbent Governor Corbett cutting state funding for education. It's a charge the governor denies vehemently. Do you agree or disagree with Wolf, and do you think the state should be spending more or less for education? And that'll be addressed to him. Mr. Bond. Thank you. I, I do agree with, Mr. with Governor Wolf. Uh, it is a shame the, the cuts have been going on in education. I just was looking at an email the other day that I got from the Fraser School District. They're having a discussion right now on a reimbursement situation that goes back to 2013 with a, the with a discussion over how they come up with the figures for, for this money. The school district says they owe them $120,000. The state says they owe them $6,000. That's huge. I mean, there's that problem there, and the legislation's getting involved to try to get that fixed. The things that have been done to cut education is just, just horrendous. We need to continue to fund education like we planned on doing. We need to fix the pension problem that's out there and fund that in education. I don't. I think that the Governor Wolf is right on track with what he's saying about the present governor we have and cutting spending the way he has. He didn't come in and live with his means. He come in with a chainsaw or an axe and just tore education apart, and we need to fix that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, everybody that's, that's watching this has probably seen the, uh, the political ad. You, you've seen the, you know, Corbett says that he didn't cut for education funding. Wolf says that, you know, he cut a billion dollars. And where the truth is, who knows? That's, but that's politics. And we can see or we can debate uh, numbers where, where funding came from for a long time. Uh, the facts are, before Corbett came in here, um, our education standards weren't where they needed to be, um, and 
after Corbett got here, our education standards aren't where they needed to be. Um, you know, I have two children. Uh, I have a vested interest to see that our schools are publicly funded and that they receive the money that they need to operate. Um, I, I mean, I know every Friday uh, in a little folder, it seems like we have a different fundraiser to try to, you, you know, provide something for these kids. Um, but I think we need to focus on education policy and not education politics. Um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of teachers. I have a lot of friends that are teachers. Um, and the number one concern that I hear from our teachers, you know, the, the people that kind of seem to get left out in this whole money debate, is that they are not given the opportunity to teach. Um, the consensus I get from teachers is that they're sick of teaching to these standards. Uh, and they want an opportunity to be able to teach our children. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's move to the third question. I'm going to ask that, Jim. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is from Mr. Warren. Uh, Democrat candidate Tom Wolf again has also <coughs> called for a severance tax on Marcellus Shell development here in the state claiming that we're one of the few, if not the only, state in the country that does not have a severance tax for natural gas. Is this something you would support or oppose if elected? And just a follow-up would be your position on the impact fees versus the severance tax. Okay, um, yeah, that, that's definitely a very good question. Um, the, the key to this, on where my position is, is that I will refuse any type of bill that would take away money from our local communities. And you know whether, so if if Wolf uh, if Wolf is elected and the bill would send the majority of the money to Harrisburg, then I absolutely would not be in favor of that. Um, I favor the local split that we have right now. So whether we make it an impact fee or whether we make it a severance tax, I'm open for debate on that. Um, the key for me is that the money stays locally with our local municipalities. Um, I, I won't agree to something that's going to give a larger cut to Harrisburg. Um, you know, we've seen this before uh, with Rendell's tax increase, um, you know, with the revenue from the casinos, and each time we were promised that it was going to be the solution to all our problems. But, you know, and, and here we are again. But the people from Philadelphia, the liberal politicians from Philadelphia, the ones that favor this, are not the ones that have to deal with the impacts to the roads. Uh, they don't have the traffic and all the other impacts that, that come to our community. I, I'm sure AJ will be the first one to tell you, you know, how much of a help that the fees that we've had right now have been to our local communities. Um, so, but like I said, you know, whether it's severance or impact, I, yeah, I'm open to debate. I, I want to see that the money stays locally, though. Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Well, yes, thank you. That's definitely um, into my wheelhouse with this impact fee. As we know, and if you don't know, the way the legislation is written right now for the impact fee, if there would be a severance tax enacted under the law, the impact fee must stop. And I cannot support that. The impact fee brings millions of dollars, not nickels, not dimes, real dollars, um, especially for economic. If you talk to any township supervisor, Green County, I shouldn't say, in the state alone, the impact fee is, is very, Viable, and you did hit on a very good point. Pennsylvania is one of the few that do, does the impact fee and doesn't do a severance tax. Um, if we can make, marry them two together where there's a severance tax involved and we can keep the impact fee, definitely. Is the impact fee a good thing? It sure has. Is it enough? It is not. Um, I, I, you just seen the other day in Green County, there was a water truck went through a bridge. I'm hoping for my friends in Green County and Jefferson Township that that water truck had enough insurance to be able to buy that bridge. Um, as we all know, we all carry a cap on our insurance. So that's gonna be a big problem there. I mean, from what I've seen, that bridge is probably junk. Um, and we all know what it costs to put bridges back in. They're not cheap. You know, that is probably a two, three million dollar project, let alone what it takes for the design and study. But from what I know, we're talking with the other township supervisors in Fayette County alone, let alone the 52nd district. Perry Township, we get about $80,000 a year in impact fee money. That's vital. Um, as you'll find out here next week, Perry Township will adopt a, another budget for the fiscal year 2015 without raising taxes again. So that'll be 15 years straight, no increase. Um, is that $80,000 real money? It sure is. Um, at the end of the day, that's the way we pay our bills, is being responsible. So if you're asking me to support an impact fee, 
definitely, if you're support, asking me to support, unless they can marry the two together, that was the only way I would support them. Okay? Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Patty, you want to take the next question? Number four down. Mr. Bonney, Common Cause and others have called for campaign finance reform, which would include limits on the size of campaign contributions and the amount of money that candidates can spend on legislative and statewide races. Do you think such limits would be a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I think it would be a great thing. Um, they, it needs to be limited. You know, when you get into these races, and I think we've talked about this before, and uh, it was, uh, I made a joke with Mark, I think, when you go to advertise in the Herald Standard, you see what them things cost. So, you know, when you go through that, that comes down to the money that you're being able to fundraise and be able to come in. But any of that, these, some of these races can get very expensive. You look at this governor's race, for instance, it's, um, it shouldn't be an issue where you're buying the race. We need to vote for the best candidate, the one that's qualified to be your next state representative. And so by doing that, that would be a great idea. I think that campaign reform would be a, a very good law. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Warner. Yeah, I, I, in a large part, I do agree with AJ here. Um, it's pretty evident that, that you know, large money back in campaigns is definitely affecting elections and it's definitely, definitely affecting policy. Um, you know, I, so I, I agree, and you know, one thing I would like to promise is that no matter what, no matter if this policy would change or not, that I will not personally ever be affected by any special interest group by any type of money that would ever persuade my vote or stance or anything for our district. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, John, you want to ask uh, question number five? Okay, uh, Mr. Wendell, uh, Fayette County's unemployment rate, according to recent statistics, shows we're tied for 12th among Pennsylvania's 67 counties with the highest unemployment rate in the state. Our rate was 6.8% compared with the state average of 5.7%. What could be done to improve the economy and lower the unemployment rate in Fayette County? You know, one off the top of my mind, one of the first things that we can do is complete Route 43. I'm sure everybody here is familiar with it. Um, this is a direct link uh, for the people that aren't. Th this road is a direct link from our area to downtown Pittsburgh. Now this road was built, uh, started in Morgantown, and it's basically stopped short of right down, downtown Pittsburgh, which would be the most important part of the road. So we basically spent all this money, uh, put everything into it for a road that stopped short of its purpose. If this road is completed, that opens up our area and people here to be able to find jobs in Pittsburgh. Uh, anybody that lives in Uniontown or Connellsville or Periopolis that understand right now what it's like and how long it takes to get to downtown Pittsburgh on uh, any given day. Um, it would also open up more economic opportunities um, to bring people in our area. You'd have people from Pittsburgh in that area coming out to Fayette County to take part in our uh, tourism, you know, the stuff at Baha'i of Howe and then Oklahoma Woodlands. Um, you know, I, I was a person directly affected by this. I mean, I lost my job. Um, you know, I went into work one day, and, you know, I got the call that, hey, we have to let you go because of the economy. Um, so I, I definitely have support um, local job retraining programs. Um, I've spoken with people at um, Western, Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania Operating Engineers. Uh, they have a great um, job apprenticeship and training program. Um, I, I think we need to do, we need more programs like that. We need to invest into our vocational education. Um, you know, bottom line is we're surrounded by three top-notch universities. We have hard-working people. Um, you know, every other county around us is growing. Um, we need new leadership. We need people here that will be a spokes spokesman for our area to bring in business. Um, you know, we need to be able to reduce red tape to allow business in here and, and to get going. Um, we need to highlight the good parts about our area. Um, you know, we have we have a lot of potential for economic growth here. We have we have a very low cost of living, which is very attractive to businesses. Um, you know, what you can pay an engineer in Fayette County, Pennsylvania um, is a lot cheaper than it would cost you in Philadelphia or New York even. Um, so if we can open up the doors and start getting businesses in here, we will start seeing economic growth in our area. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Barney. Thank you. I think the key of that whole 
economic growth that is the red thing. We just went through a major deal right now with the EPA wanting to change the Clean Water Act. That was horrendous. Thank God they got it started. If you want businesses to locate here, we can't make it harder for them. We need to make it easier. Um, a lot of things we're under right now with stormwater management. Um, we lived with that a lot in Perry Township. We're going through it back and forth. I don't know if you realize it or not, but we just had this not too long ago. If you're discharging your swimming pool or your hot tub, if you're not having it into the city sewer or being picked up by a sanitary, it's illegal to discharge it on the ground. DEP will come in if it goes off your property. That's crazy. You know, that's the kind of bureaucracy that we need to eliminate. Um, to be able to get the Votex, we're very fortunate. Connorsville School District has a tremendous Votex. Welding jobs. Laurel Business Institute just opened up a new area there for to be able to teach some trade jobs. We are fortunate. Penn State University is in the 52nd district. Fayette County is very fortunate. There's jobs here. There's advantage to be taken care of. The bike trail. Um, you may look at that bike trail and think, yeah, it's a bike. You wouldn't believe <coughs> the growth in, like says, in Periopolis. The people that use that bike trail and stay at Lenore's. Um, they come through with sojourns. I mean, there's you know 25, 30 tents. They'll stop at the park in Whitsit, use that set up, and then they go. Uh, people come in, feed them in the evening, have coffee for them in the morning. That's just extra business opportunities that are here. The other things that are here is when the the big thing with the tourism end is educating our young people. So when people walk into a place and somebody's working behind the counter and they say, Hey, I'm here visiting for the weekend. What's there to do? And when they come back, say, Oh, it's Fayette County. There's nothing here to do. That's not true. We're very fortunate here. We're a half hour from anywhere. Like you said, well, you want to go to Laurel Mountains and see the beautiful Laurel Mountains. You want to go down to the Yoffagany River, the different game lands that are here for outdoor recreation. And of course, the gas jobs that are here. You know, there's, there's gas jobs here. And by that, they're making jobs at the stone quarries. They're making jobs selling tires. The, the people selling the diesel fuel. There's economic growth here and it's available. And the other thing is getting it into the young people to want to come out and go to work. I'm not real sure how you do that. I think by giving incentives and doing the different things, and I think by going back to the blue collar jobs where they come out and getting their hands dirty and doing that kind of stuff. And again, by the different trade schools and that, it can be accomplished. I think we have a very bright future ahead of us in Bay County and in the 52nd District. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mike, I'm going to ask uh, question sure. number six. Uh, AJ, right? Yes, sir. Act 76 would eliminate school property taxes by raising the sales and income taxes. Yeah. It would pull the money raised by the tax and give each school district across the state the same amount of subsidies. It was passed by the Senate Finance Committee and now is before the Senate Appropriations Committee. Are you for it yet or against it? Um, that's a, that's a double, double edged question for me. Uh, I'm for it in one part, but I'm against it in another part. The part I'm against is if you look through that legislation, we talked about this before, it says in there if the school district doesn't receive enough funding, they can reissue their, their property tax. That would be a problem. We all know, like we said, we've been promised with the gaming and everything else going on that we're going to eliminate property tax. You know, I haven't really seen that happen. We need to eliminate property tax for our seniors. You know, I'm not against I'm not against the base sales tax. I'm not against that a bit. I think that would work because you have people out there that you know, aren't paying their fair share. And that's what we need to do. We all need to pay our fair share. There's no doubt about that. But like I said, I would be for that if they would eliminate the part that says that when a school district is, feels they're underfunded, that they can come back and implement a property tax. Because what that'll do is it'll roll back down to local government. And I'm not for any kind of unfunded mandates. You know, I don't like that idea. I don't like when Harrisburg tries to pass something that um, feels all warm and fuzzy, but then when it comes back down to local government to survive or do what they have to do, then they got to go back and issue the things that Harrisburg says, well, we didn't do it, your local government did. And that's not fair because local government works very well the way it is right now. The local government doesn't have a pension problem. You know, they do very well what they do. They get their roads done, they get their jobs done. Um, on the state level, we're fortunate with the PennDOT workers that they're out there willing to put the time and effort they have to be behind them trucks to keep our roads open. So to, to do a smoke and mirrors deal where it says, yeah, we're going to eliminate your property tax, and then you know six months later or a year later, the school district comes back and says, you know, we used to get uh, you know two hundred thousand dollars in property tax. Now the fair share is one hundred sixty thousand. 
where do we where do they make up that money? Just like I was saying earlier with that argument with that reimbursement coming back from the state now. That shouldn't be an argument. That thought that number needs to be there. If they you know, if the state owes that money to these school districts, the state needs to write them checks because you know, when you start talking a hundred thousand dollar shortfall to school districts, where's it gonna come from? Each and every one of us sitting in this room. So thank you. Um, but you did say that you, you are in favor of eliminating the uh, property tax. Do you have any other ideas or proposals or ways that you know you, you think that could be done? Mark, the biggest thing I could think of and the easiest way to eliminate property tax would be to put the money where we're supposed to put it. Like you, you hit the nail on the head. The casino money that we're gathering is supposed to be going to eliminate property tax. Um, we're, we're getting all this extra money. The Going back to the gas well industry, I know for a fact in 2013, I, I don't know this year's number, the sales tax generated an extra half a million dollars, but I couldn't tell you where that money went. I know there was an extra half a million dollars generated in Harrisburg because of the gas industry working in the state. You know, where that money was divvied out or where it was or what bills they paid with it, I can't answer that. But I think the biggest thing is to quit kicking the can down the road, paying our bills, and when we say that X amount of money from gaming is going to go there, we need to do that. We need to be held accountable to do what we say we're going to do, not just, you know, like Ryan, Ryan's right, the politician isn't the idea of it. Being accountable to our people, that's what we have to do, and fortunately I've been doing that for 14 years. Okay, Mr. Warner. Yeah, I, I agree. I, tax, property tax is definitely a big uh, problem here. Um, I've spoken to a lot of people, been to a lot of people's houses, um, and, and there, this is one concern for the people in the area that comes up time and time again. Um, I think that House Bill 76 is, is, is a good start. Um, I am I'm in favor of reforming uh, property taxes. The only issue that I would have with 76 right now is that by totally eliminating the property tax and giving all the money in Harrisburg, it leaves out the voice of local people. Um, you know, so everything is going to come top down from Harrisburg again. Um, and that's just something that I don't favor. So you you would be for it, but you don't think that pulling it is the right idea then? I, well, I, 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 like I said, I think it's a good start. Um, I would go all out and say we're going to totally eliminate the property taxes and say, okay, Harrisburg, you now take care of everything. You're going to allocate our money. I still like having the option of the local communities having some say uh, and how they're going to spend and allocate their money. Okay. Thank you very much. Bob, you want to ask the next sure. question? Number uh, seven. Currently, 19 states, oh, by the way, this question has two parts to it. Uh, currently, 19 states have legalized uh, medical marijuana for medicinal purposes. It was passed by the uh, Senate and is now uh, before the State House. Is this something you would support uh, or oppose? And uh, the second part of the question is that uh, three states have legalized mar marijuana for rec recreational uh, purposes. Is that something uh, you would support or, or oppose? Uh, the first part of the question, uh, the medical marijuana part, uh, if, if our medical community is on board with it and they say that there is definitely, you know, a uh, medicinal purpose to it and it's going to help people, then I'm absolutely in favor with it. Um, with the caveat, as long as we're able to control it and it doesn't just become easily accessible to the general public. Uh, so that kind of answers my next question. As far as totally favoring uh, legalization of marijuana in the state of Pennsylvania, I would not, I would not favor it. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Bonnie? Uh, I've went on the record in the past. As long as it's a liquid or a pill form, I would definitely be in favor of it. It, it definitely needs to be done. There's um, a lot of people that would benefit from the medical end of that. I would definitely not be in favor of recreational use of it. Um, and I wouldn't be in favor of the, the smoking form for the medical end of it because I just, you know, we all seen the, how bad cigarettes have been for everybody. I just couldn't imagine putting our child through something like that. So if we can get it in a, a pill form or a liquid form, I don't, we should already have that done, yes, so I would be informed of that, in favor of that end of it. Thank you. You're also against the recreation? Yes, I'm definitely against the recreation one of those. Okay, I'll take the next question. 
Um, some say Pennsylvania's public pension plans for state employees are in the fund by about 40 million. Governor Corbett has proposed putting all new hires in 401k plans with sizable increases in employee contributions. Democrats say the fears are overblown and contend that recent minor changes should be allowed to take place before any major haul is undertaken. What do you think should happen, and is this a major problem or not? Well, I definitely agree we have a pension problem, but I, I think it's more of an anti-payment problem than it is a pension problem. The people that have gone to work every day have contributed, continued to pay into their pension. The problem we've had in the good times, the school districts and the state have not paid their put into their when the when it was the good times and the funds were making money. They instead of putting it back for that rainy day, they went and spent that money on other things. The you know you're right. Um, there was a bill 120 was introduced a few years back. I feel it needs to run its course. We need to give it some time to leave 120 run its course to see how that works out. And we need to to fund our pensions. Even when these, in the bad times, the employees still continue to contribute to their pensions. Why, you know, I don't understand why the state wouldn't have done that to, to up to that level. If the people that are going to work every day and buying the gasoline and buying their cars and showing up for work and working their time can contribute and put their, you know, th what, whatever we do, we cannot fix on the back of the worker. You know, the, the people that shows up there, that it cannot be fixed on, on that situation. It needs to go through that. It needs to let 120 run its course. And like I said, for them few years, in the good times, when I don't understand why they wouldn't have put that money back on the side, because unfortunately the pension does go like a roller coaster. Um, going back to local government, we're very fortunate. You know, We don't have a pension problem in local government because we pay our bills as we go. Um, and when you look at taxes, you talked about property taxes prior. Local government property taxes are always very minimal. You know, we have people in Perry Township pay $14 a year in property tax, and our high end's 200 and some. So same way with the pension end. You know, we're all paying for services throughout the state, and we're putting our money in, we're paying our taxes when it's due, we're paying our fees for our license plates, we're paying our fees for a driver's license. The state needs to put that money where it's supposed to go. Before we create new bills, we need to pay these bills that we have in front of us. Well, you were a township supervisor. Were you ever... Did the township always make its yearly Definitely. payment? Definitely. We, we was always there ever any talk about postponing, or did anybody ever mm -hmm. say, hey, you guys don't really need to do it this year? Well, Mark, I'll be honest with you. When we first started, you knew the situation Perry Township was in. You know, we was we was broke, we was bankrupt. Um, we went in, we worked the first few months without getting paid because it was snowing. We had to get the roads done, and the residents don't want to hear you're broke. They paid their taxes. You know, when the pension, the state allocates us a portion of our pension. The rest of it comes out of the general fund. We do that. And no, I mean, these people show, it's, it's like your paycheck. It would be like us saying, hey, you know, you worked 40 hours this week, but we're not going to pay you. That's not fair. They're showing up, they did their job. You made this commitment to these people in saying that, hey, if you come to work for us for this amount of money a year, we're going to contribute this much amount of money to your pension. And then you don't do that. That's just, that's a shortfall that there's, I, I don't see any excuse for you know, these people go to work, they deserve to be compensated for the time they put in. I'm sure everybody in this room, when they go to work, they do a good job. That's why they go to work. Um, and we all know, you know, with our families and things, we have to work for our future so we can be able to retire. But yeah, I won't, I couldn't imagine, you know, and, and I'm sure if our pension fund would be, if our contribution to the state was higher than what we budgeted, that money we budgeted would have stayed in that fund. You know, we would, because that line out was there, we would have carried it over to the following years. So if we did have that roller coaster, that money would have still been there for our people. Okay. Uh, it, there definitely is a, a, a problem um, with, the, with, the, with the pensions. Uh, every dollar that is put into the pensions right now is underfunded. Um, and this probably goes back to one of the things that, that frustrates me the most about government. Um, we've known that this has been a problem for a while. Um, as I just said, we know every dollar that's going into the pension fund is underfunded, and yet we sit here and we don't do anything about it. We kick the can down the road. Um, it's debate, argue, no compromise. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would favor right now um, grandfathering in some type of uh, 401k system. Um, I definitely, you know, I'd have to agree with AJ where it's definitely not fair to, to just take away 
something that you had already promised people. Um, you know, we have to work around, uh, right now we're gonna have to bite a bullet, find other ways where, where we can save money and then change this <coughs> for the future. Um, like I said, we, we need to grandfather something in. Um, the course that's going down right now, we, we can't afford it. Uh, this goes back to the problem that we, you know, with why our property taxes continually go up. And they're going to continually go up until this problem is fixed. Um, every year, you are guaranteed, and I will promise you right now, if nothing is done about this pension problem, you will see your, you will see your property taxes skyrocket. Um, you know, so we have to do something. Um, I would rather do it now for our generation and we have to bite the bullet around a couple areas, um, then, then, then so be it. But the way that we're doing it right now is just not fair for our future generations because they're going to be dealt a big problem. Well, one of the complaints about the 401k is, is that then that would take money out of basically the, the contributions for the pensions so that that would make the, the, the pension um, system, it, it would be deprived kind of money that That's could right. be used to, uh, should be used to, to pay retirees. Yeah, and I, I don't disagree with that. I don't want to take anything right now out of fund. I'm just saying in the future when we start getting people on there, we need to be able to grandfather in a different system. We can't just say this is how it's going to work. Uh, you know, I would definitely be in favor of going to a 401k system like the majority of people in, in this country do. Um, I, I don't have, um, you know, I don't want to take away anything that was promised to these people. Um, you know, I'd be willing to compromise, um, you know, switching around or, or maybe grandfathering the multiplier down for the pensions, you know, what, whatever it may be. Uh, we need to try to do something. Okay, Bill, you want to take uh, next question, number nine? Thank you. <clears throat> this question kind of uh, has some parallels to the last one. Changes have been proposed to do away with the state control of our alcohol, alcohol distribution system, including doing away with state stores. What do you think should happen? I don't think the state should be in the booze business. Um, you can leave it to government to have a monopoly on something and find a way to lose money doing it. Um, I, I just, I just think that the state should just totally be out of the the booze system, and that we need to privatize our, our liquor stores like almost every other state in our country. Thank you. Um, the Ron's right on that end of it. The, I don't know how they can lose money doing that, but I don't feel they should be privatized. I feel they should continue to keep them jobs there that they have and be able to re-look at that and re-manage it to the point where it is making money. There, there's no excuse why, you know, when they're in, in the alcohol business, it's it's better controlled, it's a better situation where, and I understand it's an inconvenience for some people, but the idea of being able to just go into the grocery stores and have the problems, you know, with beer is one thing, but when you start with fifths of whiskey and other things, that's it needs to be very, very tight gripped. We need to be able to control that. Thank you. Thank you. So you don't you don't want any changes or not on the alcohol end of it. I mean, on the, I, I'm sorry, on the whiskey end of it, it needs to stay state mandated, state covered. But you would be in favor of just maybe some changes with sure. maybe locking them in convenience stores or Oh yes, I would oh, yeah, I would definitely be open to that. I would definitely open to some changes that way, definitely. Yes, thank you. Uh, this would be for Mr. Borney. Mm -hmm. Changes have been proposed to the state's open records and open meeting laws, which would mandate agendas for all municipal and school board meetings uh, to be published in advance and mandate that executive sessions be tape recorded to make sure that no abuses are occurring. Are you in favor or opposed to these proposals? But you know, I'm always in favor of open records. I mean, we've done that for, like I said, being a local government for 14 years. It's, it's been an open book. Um, I, in 14 years, maybe we've had a half a dozen executive sessions. And because of, you know, of, of legal issues we've had in the beginning. But here towards the end, I mean, if you need to go to an executive session, it should be for a legit reason, not just because you don't want to discuss something in the public. Um, I just went through a huge right to no request um, 
It was 400 and some pages. No problem, it's there. The problem I do have, though, is the burdensome that it had on my office and my secretary. You know, we probably had 20 plus hours of digging all that information out for them. 400 and some pages at a quarter apiece. Um, there's, there's my problem. If they want to burden the taxpayers of local government with the right to know, that's fine, but they need to pay their fair share. You know, and again, on the local government end, we shouldn't magnify the cost. You know, if it took eight hours to do it, then that's what they should pay. We shouldn't say it took 20. Um, and I would hope that wouldn't happen. But no, we need to have a, a, an open record. I mean, I, the running joke in my office always is, if you want to look at my desk, go look, you own it. I just let them sit behind it. Um, so yeah, we, we have to have open government, and I've learned that, believe me, on a first-hand basis. 14 years, when we first started out, the, the biggest thing you need is to trust your residents. That the garner that community trust so that when you're making them decisions, they understand what you have to do. I mean, we sit through that, and that's not a problem at all. We definitely need to have all the open records we can have. And you favor publishing the agendas for school districts and I would favor being able to publish them. I'd be, able, I'd be for publishing them online. Because, number one, I could just see we need, you'd have to add 10 pages to your newspaper because most of us all meet at the same time. Um, or if somebody wanted to come, I mean, if you come to my office now and want to copy your agenda before the meeting, we'll be more than happy to give it to you. That's not a problem. Um, we, we give you minutes after they're approved. Our, every bill, every dollar we spend is in our packet when you come to our meetings. And, you know, when you come to our township meeting, it's probably eight or nine pages you get. If we bought a oil filter at the local, local Napa store or, you know, a load of ashes, it's right there in black and white. You take it home with you at the end of the day. So you can see our expenses and how we do that. I mean, it's um, it's it's your money. You know, we're we're just fortunate enough to be able to be able to budget it and, and spend it properly. Mr. Warner. Yeah, I, I, government needs and should be as open as possible. Uh, and anything that you know would hold politicians accountable, I will always be in favor of. Uh, you know, in fact, what I mentioned before about expenses, uh, I don't think a lot of representatives do this, but you know, I take the initiative. Uh, to show our folks, you know, what kind of cost it takes to have your representatives go to Harrisburg. I would gladly post all the expenses. And, and then it would be good, too, because at the end of the road, if you can compare that to see, you know, the abuse of the per diem system, you can compare it to say, this is what you would have bought taking per diems. Thank you. Maybe Kate? Uh, Patty, you want to take uh, question number 11? Mr. Warner, there's been talk about reducing the size of the state legislator. Legislature, yes, legislature, <laughs> and its staffs. Where do you stand on that? Uh, Pennsylvania has one of the largest legislators um, in, in, in a state, I mean in a country, excuse me. Um, and it's very expensive. I mean, you're paying representatives and senators maybe some thousand dollars on top of, um, you know, pensions and per diems and everything else. Um, at the same time, it is also very nice that you have that many local um, government officials around you that, that you can talk to. Uh, I, so I am in favor of reducing it. Um, I, what the exact number is, I, I don't know. I would like to bring it down. Um, and, you know, we could, you know, you, you can look at the cost savings from it. Um, also, other than, you know, other than reducing it, I, I think that we need to limit the personal perks for each politician. So. We reduce the legislator, but we also make it competitive with other states in the country as far as you know, the size and the cost, by also reducing the perks. I mean, as we mentioned before, these people, they're already paid $85,000 on top of the pension and per diems and state car and everything else. Thank you. Uh, I do agree that we need to downsize. I went on record in the past to say Fayette County should have two state representatives. We don't need five. Um, but the other thing about that is the double-edged sword there is saying to reduce the size of staff. That would be tough to do because you need to be available to your constituents. And that's the whole thing. When people need help, that's what you're there to do. That's the main job is to help our constituents. So we need staff to do that. Um, so I don't really know them numbers exactly staff-wise or how it would be. But um, yeah, I definitely think our legislature is too big and we need to reduce that size. But at the same time, we have to be able to provide our service to, our, to the constituents. I mean, if anybody in this room would need something and you had to get an answering machine, I know how I am when I call an answering machine. I don't like that. You know, I like the personal one-on-one -on -one communication. And anybody here that knows ever calls me, I usually answer my phone anytime. 
Um, I pride myself on that. It's um, whether it's three o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's just what we do. And today, unfortunately, in the society we're in, we're in an instant gratif gratification society. Somebody sends you an email, somebody calls you, they expect an answer. Um, you know, some, the, the best phone calls probably, I hate to bother you, but, well, you know, you're not bothering me if you called me, number one, but if you thought you was, you know, that's a whole other story. But um, that's, I, I agree that the legislation is too big, but I also agree we need to provide a service that everybody expects and is entitled to. Thank you. Okay, this will be our <coughs> last question. Uh, John, you want to ask question number 12? Okay, uh, Mr. Brady, do you have concerns that drilling for Marcella Shell is being done in the safest manner possible? And do you think the State Department of Environmental Protection is doing a good job of mon monitoring the industry? <laughs> um, I, I do feel that the the major players out there that are doing the drilling are doing it in a, in a, a way that they are very, very cautious of how they do things. Um, I've had the privilege to tour a couple of drilling sites. If they spill anything, even if they spill a gallon of water, it's a 10-page report. Um, their membranes they set down so the things doesn't get in the ground. If they spill a gallon of milk, um, so it's, they're very cautious. We have a well going on right now that's bordering one, bordering our township. They'll be moving a big rig in tomorrow, actually. Um, DEP end of it, I think they need some work. Um, I feel some stuff DEP does um, on that end of it, they, they need to be a little more cautious on how they do it. If they follow the way some of these companies are operating, they work real well. But then, of course, you know, we all see that you have the, the bad actors. So, you know, we've done some things through PSAT, through the State Association, where we met with the Marcella Shell organization through some zoning changes and things. They wanted everything painted with kind of a one brush. So if this works in Perry Township, it has to work in, you know, um, it have to work in Greene County, have to work in, in Morgan Township. Well, that doesn't always work. Different areas call for different things. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. When you see these bad actors come in here like this, like that gentleman who drove that water truck through the bridge, not everybody does that. You know, most of the drivers have enough common sense that they see a three-ton bridge and not going to take a 30, you know, a, a 60,000 pound vehicle across it. Um, so we don't want to hold them all accountable. We want to hold. I should say, we do want to hold them accountable, but we don't want to hold them too restrictive because of the one bad actor. We need to make sure they're doing it safely. We definitely. Our water is very important to us. The last thing we want to do is any water contamination. You know. Um, but I just seen the other day in the newspaper, uh, PennDOT was unfortunate enough. They rolled a, a truck over that was painting lines. All the paint went into the stream. So, you know, there's a whole other scenario there. They had a hazmat operation, had to come in, and, and, and PennDOT uses a water-based paint. So, you know, that all makes it real interesting. So, on that end of it, but with the gas companies, um, we're familiar with Chevron. We use Chevron, you know, they've been in Perry Township the most. They do a good job. Um, they're very, if we have a problem, wise, it's one phone call, they're there. They know what's going on, if it's a truck using the wrong road, something of that nature. But I know safety-wise, you know, like we talked about earlier, safety is job one. That's the most important thing. We don't want to see any, we want everybody to get home at the end of the work day. We don't want to see anybody get hurt. And when they're done, we don't want to be in a situation where we was um, years ago with the strip mines. You know, we want to be able to put the, our grounds back, be able to enjoy our hunting, be able to have clean streams for our fishing, and be able to extract our gas that we need to live on. We need to start living on our own minerals. So, you know, by, by getting the coal out of the ground safely and getting the gas out of the ground, we can continue to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Warren? Yeah. I'm an outdoorsman. I love hunting, love fishing, love being outside. You know, I, I enjoy Fayette County. I enjoy the mountains here. I enjoy the streams here. Um, so, you know, we do. We have to hold gas companies accountable to make sure that, you know, we aren't doing anything extraordinary. Um, you know, we have to keep, we have to keep things clean. Um, but, you know, kind of as AJ was mentioned, there, there's, there's a line there you have to watch. Um, you know, I, I don't agree with what, um, you know, Obama's EPA regulations are, for example. Uh, I don't agree with the mandates that they're putting on the coal companies. Um, I mean, that's directly costing us jobs. Um, coming from a, a logging family, uh, I, I mean, I know directly uh, some of the problems that, that, that you can have and some of the costs that you know, for, for environmental protection, and like I said, I, I'm okay with that. It's just that we can't, we can't go overboard, um, you know, the, because of, uh, you know, certain things, you know, e even the logging business, for example, because of the EPA is, is coming under gun to, to, to limit the amount of, uh, 
times during the year they were able to log because of migration for um, you know a, a certain bat. It's not that I am against that bat or anything. It's just that there comes a point where you have to make a decision and say, okay, are we going to be okay with these people losing their jobs for a small a small impact? Or do we want to keep everything 100% pristine? Uh, and unfortunately, you know, progress is going to have an impact a little bit on the environment. I think we just need to do whatever we can to keep it as clean and safe as, as we can. Thank you. Okay, that's uh, going to do it for our questions. And now, the you know, candidates will have three minutes to give uh, closing statements. You can Talk about whatever the, you want to talk about. The floor is yours for the uh, next three minutes. We'll start with that, Mr. Uh, once again, I'd like to, to thank you guys for, for having me here today. Um, you know, folks, we had the same political leadership in this county for a long time. Um, and based on the results of this leadership, I think it's time for some fresh faces and some new ideas. Uh, we need someone who isn't going to play political games, someone who's going to stand up to career politicians in both parties. Um, you know, Harrisburg has to begin to do what we do in our homes and businesses. Uh, we need to eliminate waste and set real budget priorities um, and take care of our residents without bankrupting our future generations. Um, we need to start by creating jobs in our area. Uh, working for both a small family business and a very large corporation, uh, I know what it takes to start getting businesses back in Western Pennsylvania. Um, we need to stand together, and as we just mentioned, we need to stop Obama's liberal uh, EPA and the war on coal and get people back in the mines and get the power plants back up and running. Um, you know, let's stop wasteful spending in Harrisburg and prioritize Pennsylvania's budget. Um, I think that there's a big problem when education, economic development, public safety all receive less, all receive less funding than welfare. Um, you know, we need to fight for property tax reform and help protect our seniors on fixed income. Uh, we need to see to it that our schools are fully funded and that our children have a bright future ahead. Um, you know, let's get rid of the, the, the politicians and elect somebody who will fuse all the taxpayer perks and work for us. Uh, I want to see a better Fayette County. I want to see a place where people aren't forced to move to go find a job. Um, you know, these are the things that I want to fight for and this is why I want to be your next representative. And again, thank you guys very much. Okay, Mr. Bonnie. Thank you, Mark. And again, I want to really thank you very much for the opportunity to be here this evening. Again, I'm AJ Bonnie, running for the House Representative of the 52nd District. Been a township supervisor for 14 years, been a member of the Executive Board of BSATS for six, and a volunteer fireman for 30. And one thing we didn't touch on was the corporate administration's past budget cut the volunteer fireman $16 million. That's real money, too. And as Mark just did an article not too long ago in the Herald Standard about the volunteer fire departments, that's a big deal. Every one of us, I don't care where you're at, except for the city of Uniontown, you're covered by volunteer firemen. And the city of Uniontown is backed up by volunteer firemen. So to sit there and be able to go through that and take a $60, $60 million cut out of the loan program, where'd that money go? You know, it went into this budget that they call a budget that we all know was a terrible budget. So hopefully, by taking what I've learned and what I live every day, by being in Perry Township, not raising taxes and living within our means, I plan on taking that to Harrisburg and representing you in the 52nd District. I've always said the one thing I was never good at was mind reading, and I'm sure I won't get any better of it. If you need me, call me. I'll be accessible. I want to work with my constituents every day, and I'll continue to do that, whether I'm at home, whether I'm in Harrisburg. This isn't a hobby. This isn't something to kid around about. This is a serious, serious job, being state representative for the 52nd District. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We'll continue to do what we have to do. We need to fix the problems we have without affecting the working class. And, you know, that's probably a very huge statement to make because everything we do, whether it's the cost of gasoline, and, you know, we can sit here and call them impact fees, we can sit here and call them taxes. At the end of the day, it's where the money comes out of. And one thing I did miss when you talked about the impact fee and the severance tax, some of the gas well contracts that was written, it says if there was a severance tax enacted, it'll come out of the pockets of the lien holder. So that all needs to be changed. We need to look at that. Um, we gotta make sure that these people that went through this and are having this 
well on their property at the end of the day that are making some, some money. Some people aren't making any money. You know, I have some people that are making three, four dollars a month, and there's other ones making good money at it. But again, we need to extract our materials that we have. We need to create these jobs. We need to continue what we're doing. Uh, we need, you know, the, the next thing you're going to be running, writing articles about, Mark, is the ambulance services. You know, there's a big problem there with some of the changes in Medicare, that the ambulance services aren't getting paid what they need to be paid. Um, we're very fortunate in Fayette County. You know, Fayette EMS does a great job. But again, when they're not getting paid, they need to come up with other revenues to be able to keep these ambulances rolling and keep them in our communities. It works out real well. We need to continue to help the volunteer fire companies. Um, I'm very fortunate to be the chaplain for the association, uh, the, for the county association. And I'd be remiss, you know, I'm, my wife Suzanne, my 14-year-old daughter Alexis, been married 18 years. Um, the people that have stepped up to help me through this campaign, I really appreciate. You know, Senator Kucinich, Representative Kula, the, the United Mine Workers, the plumbers and pipe fitters, um, just the um, local union for the employees union from PennDOT, um, the retirees from PennDOT. All these unions have been willing to step up and listen to me and, and listen to what I had to say and thought I had enough to say that they were willing to endorse me. Um, I'm pro-gun, you know, I've always been the same way and I love to hunt. I, we need to be able to continue to do what we have to do there with the NRA and different things of that nature. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, again, I want to thank you very much. Thank everybody else and please on November 4th vote AJ Bologna for the House of Representatives. Thank you. Thanks for Okay, once again, we want to thank the candidates for coming in and agreeing to uh, share their views with the readers of the uh, Herald Standard and viewers on our website. And I want to thank you out there for watching. My name is Mark O'Keefe. I'm the editorial page editor for the Herald Standard, and we'll see you later. Thank you.